Living and working on the moon may sound like science fiction, but the head of the European Space Agency wants to make this ambitious idea a reality. A permanent lunar base, or as he calls it, a moon village, but unlike any village you might find on Earth. In a moon village, we would like to combine the capabilities of different spacefaring nations, be it robotic or being a human, to look also for different activities, be it pure science, be it, or be it also business, even tourism, or mining, or whatever, to put them together on the same place. And this is the idea of the moon village. It's been almost 50 years since man first walked on the lunar surface and the end of the Apollo program. But now, for many people, a permanent base is the next logical step, following the cooperation of countries from all over the world for the International Space Station. One key thought is to use the Moon's own natural resources to build and sustain a base, its water ice, metals and minerals, using its own materials to 3D print a structure or building element. A rover could land on the surface, inflate a dome, and the rovers could begin to construct a building to protect the astronauts. And while a moon village is a big project, it can start small. The advantage of the idea of moon village is that we don't need a big amount of funding at the beginning. We don't have to define everything and just to say, OK, we built a big structure. The idea is that the different actors, the different players worldwide, they look in their special capabilities, in their special interests, and they bring just their part into the idea. That means we can start with a small landing mission, which many countries are already planning, up to a huge investment, for instance, for some telescope, radio telescope on the far side of the moon. So it's, it's a multiple uses by multiple users, but a single place. But there are hazards to consider, such as solar and cosmic radiation, micrometeorites and extreme temperatures. And so the ESA Director General believes that areas near the poles or in constant daylight would be the most suitable on the far side of the Moon. We have places on Moon, which are at least, especially at the South Pole, which has permanent darkness, where we can find water, and we know from some missions that there is water. Water is a good source to produce hydrogen and oxygen. And also to go into the shadow of the moon, uh, we uh, will have places where we, are, we, we don't have the radiation coming from the Earth. So building a telescope over there by using the material we find on the moon, so not bringing all the stuff from the Earth, that could also open new possibilities to look deep into our universe. The idea is that the moon base would be a global project, a natural new step, emulating how the International Space Station works. We have more than 60 spacefaring nations around our world. And um, the Americans are now uh, saying journey to Mars, and I totally agree that it's right. Humans will go to Mars at one day. But this is a little bit far away in the future. So also the Americans are interested in the moon. So it will be the Americans, it will be the Russians, it will be the Chinese, it will be the Indians, the Japanese, and even more countries with smaller contributions. So my hope is that we will really have a really global uh, exploration scheme on the moon. The head of ESA's commitment to a moon village sends a powerful message, although it could be 20 years before the technology is ready to make it happen. But as more nations plan to return to the moon, the need for a permanent base will grow and Europe could be at the heart of the next giant leap for humankind.